Hey guys, welcome back to Blaze TV again. Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always. Uh, Blaze head coach Danny Stewart joins us. Um, the roster's done. We, we, we're finished. We, we're all ready to go uh, in terms of playing personnel. Um, it's been a really uh, exciting kind of three, four weeks um, to kind of see what you'd usually get in terms. I always get hyped up about player announcements. Like, you know, looking at social media, a lot of people do. Um, so to have what you'd usually get spread out over a summer in a short period of time has been has been pretty awesome. Um, and uh, Danny joining us. Uh, in, <laughs> I mean, we said this, I think, the last time we spoke when we talked about uh, all the Norwegian guys we've been signing recently. Um, but it, it's been busy for you, but but also uh, also kind of fun as well. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. A lot of, lot of interest, a lot of names coming through. And um, I guess with the short period of time, it kind of, it almost pushes you in a position to, to make decisions quicker than you normally do. Um, obviously, with you know, five months or so to, to make decisions. Sometimes you, you sit on guys for a while, think there's something better out there, but I think, you know, I had to pull the trigger a little bit quicker than, than normal this, this time around. So a lot more work in, in a shorter period of time to, to get that done, but it was exciting. It was fun along with the draft. It's been a, in that sense, it's been a fun couple of weeks, but uh, you know, a lot of work to go in, into it. Sorry. So um, the, the last two signings that we had were, were both forwards. Um, one, another NCAA uh, first year pro, but um, someone who's just come off the back of a, a massive breakout year in Nick Germain. Um, and, and clips of Nick uh, are all over the internet. Um, he looks like one talented young man. You must be delighted to have him on board. Yeah, no, we are. Like you said, he, he had a, a very good senior year at Quinnipiac. He was their team captain and um, you know, had 12 goals, which is great production, you know, in, 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 at that level, obviously they don't play as many games as at the pro level. So um, yeah, very skillful, great skater, very skilled, um, you know, can score, can play, you know, both wings. So, um, you know, we're excited. We're excited. I think he's a guy that'll make a good transition to a, to a pro player. You, you talked about watching clips of Edvardson um, and being gripped immediately by, by what he could do. Um, you must have seen some of the things online there that, that Jermaine can do as well. Uh, he looks incredibly talented. Yeah, no, I caught the, uh, I think it was Barstool Sports uh, highlight of him with his backhand toe drag and, and deke the goalie out. But uh, to be honest with you, I first came across Nick through, um, through Chucky, Charlie Corcoran. Um, they're good friends. They grew up together, play up, played growing up together. So he kind of, uh, he sent me a little text and gave me a little kick and said, Hey, please take a look at this guy. So um, I, I started looking at him and um, it wasn't long before I was, I was sold on him. So, you know, sometimes your, your, your players and your ex players can be some of your best resources. So um, I said to Chucky, I said, well, if it doesn't work out, I can blame it on him. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I think, um, Corcoran's um, playing or played Hammond's team as well. So there was a, there was a lot of interest there. A lot, lot riding on uh, one of your ex employees' shoulders there in old Charles Corcoran. Eh? Yeah, but, um... yeah. I've been asking <laughs> you, I'm saying you got to beat those guys. We, we need Hammond to get them back here. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that happens. Just a um, yeah. we, we, I think it was Keck that we were talking about playing in Omaha, Nebraska, and, and that being you know, one of, if not the best conferences in, in NCAA hockey. Um, I, I looked at, I'm not, I'm not a huge NCAA guy. I don't profess to be, but I looked at Quinnipiac a few times because uh, Ben Arndt played for them. He was with the Blaze um, about five, six years ago. That is an incredibly deep conference as well. So um, a first year pro, but he's already having played against elite opposition. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Quinnipiac has been, you know, they've turned into a, a national powerhouse the last decade mm. or so they've, uh, you know, I think, I think back in my day at, at, at the NCAA level, they were just kind of, they had just turned division one and were just kind of finding their feet, but you know, they've had new facility over the last decade, new facilities, and they've just become a powerhouse. And I, th I think even this year, they're, they're a fantastic club. So it's uh it's a great program and, and they've produced a lot of great players into the pro level. And, you know, I think he'll, he'll be the same. And there's a, there's quite a lot online about his character as well. He seems like a really standout individual. Yeah, I heard nothing but good things about that. Uh, great team guy. Look, he, you know, college program, you don't you don't get a C on your jersey unless you have those qualities. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that played a big part in our decision as well. And, you know, we, we emphasize good people and with good character here. And 
um, you know, we're, we're excited for him to, to come. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, I, I, I hark back to the, the last time we spoke, we were talking about um, Edvardson and um, him being really suited to the bigger pad at Nottingham. Um, it looks like that's going to be the same for Jermaine as well. Yeah, they, 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 they play on big ice, on the Olympic ice surface at NCAA as well. So, you know, it won't, uh, it won't be a tough adjustment for him. And um, again, another good skater that, you know, with a little extra space out there will only benefit him. Mm, for sure. Um, another lefty, but I noticed that you, uh, you said that he can play on both wings as well, which is important for the versatility. Yeah, 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 he, he can. And, 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 and he, I think three out of the four years at Quinnipiac, he played on the right side. Um, so that's, that's where we, we intend to start him. Um, just adds a little depth on the right side there. And, you know, obviously with, <clears throat> with Luke Ferreira advancing to the final, um, you know, we need, we're going to need somebody to, to kind of step up into that position. So then most likely be him. Cool. And Stu, uh, a, fam- a more familiar face to talk about. Yeah, a more familiar face and uh, maybe flipping the script a little bit in terms of, uh, uh, we've been talking a lot about youth, but an older guy with more experience, but some of the fans are no doubt going to be thrilled to that that is coming back in Yanni Larkin. And I mean, how, how excited are you to be bringing him back to Coventry? Yeah, really, really excited. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big Larkin fan. Um, no, yeah, obviously Yanni doesn't uh, fit our model of youth, does he? <laughs> um, but uh, look, I, he's a special player. He's he's got a, a quality that you know not a lot of players have, and um, you know, with with him and and hopefully. You know Hammond being here on time. You've got arguably two of two of the best passers I've seen in this league in the last four or five years. So, um, you know, kind of makes sense. You know, the guys like Keck and and Jermaine and and Edwardson and you know obviously you know alongside Ferreira, you know, it makes more sense with those guys and why we chose them. So, um, you know, we're excited to get him back. Like I said, he, he makes your power play better. He makes your whoever he plays with better. Um, and you know he. You know that line last year was a big part of our success, and if we can, we can get Feds back here, hopefully, and um, you know stick someone in between them, you know, hopefully we can we can uh, replicate that success. Yeah, I, was it forty assists in forty three games for Larkin, and that's that's the sort of production that only a, a top level player gets in the elite league, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He's uh, he's quality. I mean, we're we're excited to get him back, and like you said, guys love him in the room. He's a great team guy, and um you know he he fits in well with these young guys you kind of mentioned it last time that we spoke about how he actually found it infectious to be around all of the young guys and he really sort of fitted in with the the sort of like the overall sort of team team culture I guess you know it was that part of the decision that actually it's not going to change that much it's still a young guy a young group so Yanni's still going to be a brilliant fit yeah, I, th- I think so. You know, we've, we've, we've got obviously our, our British, British guys coming back and there's some familiarity there and obviously Chris Polkamp and, um, <clears throat> you know, nothing's automatic. You know, you can, you can try to find, I guess, follow the same, the same, uh, you know, culture, same outline as, as he had the season before. But, you know, it, it's not automatic. Like I said, you know, different characters come in, different, different pieces of the puzzle <laughs> come in and, um, but you, you know, you hope to, you hope that it works out. You know, I've always said this in years past in interviews that there's a big element of luck and success in this league. And, um, you know, we're hopeful that in a short period of time, these guys really, you know, get to know each other and, and hit the, hit it off and, and, you know, have fun doing this. And, you know, I think you got a lot of guys that just, just want to play hockey and they want to play hockey games. And, you know, a guy like Yanni, he's, he's been fortunate in the sense to, to, to find a team and, 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 and be on the ice a lot more than maybe most, but, you know, it's been very stop and go in Norway and they haven't played a lot of games. So I think he'll be excited to, uh, he'll be excited to play games, but I don't know if he'll be excited to play that many in a, in a month. So, <laughs> you know, we'll have to find Yanni some rest, I think. But with, you, you mentioned about how it's going to be maybe tough to get guys going after, you know, having not skated and not played games for a while. Uh, and maybe you don't quite know where everything's going to fit in terms of players. A lot of players, that, and um, you mentioned this with Jermaine as well, and a couple of the other guys, that they can play both wings or they can play in the middle or up the wing or they, can, you know, they, they are contrary. Having that versatility in the lineup is really going to allow you to kind of experiment and move people around until you find something that works. Is, was that the plan to kind of keep your options open in that way? Yeah, it's always good to have versatility. Um, I think it's a bonus. I, I don't know. I mean, it's always part of our plan, but I, 
to the extent that we have, I don't know if we, that was completely intentional. It just kind of worked out that way. Um, but you know, it's always good to, to be able to move guys around, you know, when you, when you've got too many guys pigeonholed in one position, it really limits what you can do. And like you said, and, you know, especially when you hit injuries and, and stuff like that. So, you know, the ability for us to, to roll four lines, um, once we're at full strength will be key. Um, you know, kind of, you know, I guess prevent guys from playing too many minutes too early on, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you know, throw guys out there for 20, 22, 25, 30 minutes a night and, you know, expect them to do that for 13 to 15 games over the course of a month. So um, having that depth is, is important. And, you know, hopefully by, you know, week three or week four, then maybe these guys are in the full swing of things and we start seeing a different level of hockey as well. It, it's not just the the twenty guys, you know, the four line four four lines and fours. You've got the sort of the other three guys as well who could potentially be rotating in and out of the lineup. So there, there's more than just the depth of having that four lines, isn't there? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and you know what, adding them to the on to the on site bubble was 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 massive because you know now if you you know a, a guy comes to you a half hour before the game or 45 minutes before the game and says, ah, you know what? I'm just not feeling it tonight. My groin's a little bit tight. And, you know, with so many games in a short period of time, it just makes no sense to force the guy to play through it. You know, we've already booked our spot in the semifinals too. Right. So, you know, you might as well get that guy some rest. And so obviously, you know, taking care of these guys and, and, and injury prevention will be massive for this thing, not just for the team success for, but, but for these guys to be at the best of their ability as well. So, you know, these taxi guys, what they call them, I, I, I got to stop calling them that. I, I don't think I'd like to be called a taxi guy if I, if I was in it. So, but uh, no, they'll, they'll be big for us. You know, if, you know, if, uh, you know, Shane Owen or Jordan Hadley has a heavy night um, the night before, um, there's nothing stopping us, you know, throwing Bray in for, for some action or at least to, to be on the bench and, and, you know, in case and, and giving guy a complete rest. So um, it's, it's crucial. And, and, you know, Sam Russell's played, you know, for MK and he's, he's played at a decent level and he's an up and coming kid. So, you know, we get an injury back there or a guy back there needs a break, then, you know, I'm, I'm happy to put him in as well. So yeah, that, that extra depth is, is going to be massive for this event. Edward. Yeah, you mentioned, it's interesting, you mentioned um, uh, some of the younger guys there. Um, and, and this might be kind of not something you're thinking about right now, uh, a great deal amount of, but for, for some of these guys, what's the, what's the possibility of, of them being a, a Coventry Blaze player next season? Because it almost seems like an impromptu audition. Always potential, yeah. I mean, there's, uh, you know, four, four seasons ago when I came in, you know, we had you know, we, after that first season, you know, we had, you know, guys like Ashley Tate and Russ Cowley um, move on to, to other, uh, other um, teams. And um, it was almost a rebuild of our, of our British core, you know, but I shouldn't say completely. You had Ross Venus, who's been here for, you know, 20 years and uh, you know, and David Clements had already come here. So, you know, that, that was the start of, but I think, I think, when those guys moved on, that was, you know, maybe Ross's ability to, to move up as a, as a British player and, 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 and find a different type of role. And, uh, you know, Clem was obviously still young and he's come on. And then we added Ferreira and we added Forbesy and Headley. And, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen these guys just develop into to such good players and, and great team guys. And, and I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think we've, we've arguably developed one of the best British scores in the league. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're realistic here as well. And, um, you know, guys won't stay forever and, you know, whether it's guys move on for pastures new or bigger clubs come in and, and, and offer bigger money, you know, at, at some point, maybe we'll, we'll potentially lose a couple of these guys in the future. And, um, you got to look at, at, at who's going to replace them. So like you said, this, this gives us a, a chance to really, get a good look at some guys and whether it's next year, or a couple of years down the road. Yeah, absolutely. The more you can learn about a player, um, you know, the ins and outs of their game off and on the puck and in the dressing room and makes that decision a lot easier in the future. Mm -hmm. um, Stu, is there anything else you wanted to throw into the pot? I'm just absolutely ready to go now. Wanting to call some games uh, and I'm sure no doubt you're, you're, you're wanting to get on the ice and, and start um coaching and seeing the guys and just getting everything underway after what has been 
the probably the maddest scramble you've ever had in your hockey career. Yeah, I think it'll be <laughs> exciting stepping onto that bench for the for the first time in a long time, and it's been a long year for everybody. So yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm absolutely excited. I can't. I'm I'm tired of this admin and and sorting out logistics stuff. I just want to get there and and start coaching. Um, anyway, um, I'll leave you, Danny, um, Stu, guys. Thank you so much for watching. The mini series is just around the corner. If you haven't already subscribed, um, go have a look at it. It's going to be an incredible event. Really looking forward to it. Um, but it, until then, see you soon.